I know it's here. I, I saw it here. I put it here. Uh, what? Uh, have you come round to see me again? I want you to look at this. Research journal. I want you to tell us whether what's written there can actually happen or not. Well, let me see. Hmm. Yes, yes, I see. Oh, that's right. Resurrecting the dead. Ooh. A cauldron. The Bradwin tales, indeed. Yes. It is most likely that the events detailed here did take place. Just as I thought. But that's so frightening that Personally, if Personally, I have not attempted it. I am certain that the immigre document contained accounts of secret rituals conducted to resurrect the dead. But as you can tell from reading this, it involves complicated preparatory work. I had given up discerning the impossibility of using the psychic powers necessary to create such an immense psychic platform. And moreover, I never expected that people would attempt to challenge such a feat. The journals say that the physical body was resurrected, but not the soul. Absolutely. The ancients held the secret to life in the palm of their hands. <laughs> but they could never come close to touching the secrets of the soul. They resurrected the dead in order to use their physical bodies as a workforce, thus building the great civilization we oftentimes speak of. In fact, we would not be far off if we called them uh, puppeteers. <laughs> Exploiting the human body as an object. If so, then we Yes, the resurrecting the dead and restoring them to life as it was before death is in Possible. Then how do you return the resurrected body once again to Earth? That is a very complicated question, since it already defies universal logic. Please. It is no easy task. Tell me how. It's Woody Lane, God rest her soul, wanted. Right. <laughs> it is not absolutely impossible. Uh, but I would need to call forth the sacred powers in order to complete such a feat. Hmm. Oh, yes. I know that the arm of Daniel Scotius, the man who built this monastery, is stored in a stone statue on the ground. If, if we... Throw that into a cauldron. We will successfully destroy the roots of the tree of life. Oh, after that, I haven't a clue whether to call forth the energies of fire or entrust the task to water. Oh, it is so complicated. Fire. No. Or water. What are we going to do? Oh, Heavenly Father, bless our souls and bring forth an end to this suffering. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Oh.
This must be the temple. There's no way! If I put a bullet through it, it wouldn't budge. What are we gonna do? How ironic to have made it this far and not have access to the temple. Kudelka, Edward, you both must go now. It is my friend that is apparently responsible for this disturbance, and therefore I am partially responsible for this trouble. I have no intention of asking for your sympathy, and I'm in no position to plead for your help. So from this point forward, I can manage on my own. Don't kid yourself. We didn't come along just for your sake. No, Kudoka, you should go back now. It'll be far too dangerous. Edward, you're the one who should go home. You were not meant for this world. Granted, you are a good fighter, having had plenty of experience. And I won't deny the fact that you have the killer instinct, either. But when all is said and done, you are an average Joe. I am not. I was meant to exist in this realm. It's the only place I can carve out an existence for myself. Quit lecturing me! I want no part of a lukewarm existence filled with regret. No. My way is to not worry about consequences, and to do whatever it is I want to do. Chance means nothing to me. Life's a gamble, and once you place your bet, you'd better play to win, or else you end up dead. Edward, you really are ridiculous. That's what they tell me. Do as you like. That I will. Oh, suddenly when you feel like it, you decide when you can and cannot open doors? Wait, there's a way. Remember when we were searching Patrick's mansion? There was various chemicals around. It may take some time, but I think I can combine the chemicals to make nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin? That's great! We're talking powerful explosives here. For this door, I think we'll need a full flask. Indeed, if I drop the flask before I return, I'll be knocking on Heaven's door in a flash. It is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or hell. begin my work. Can you two wait for me here? <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> what happened to the girl, Melanie? <laughs> she was gone the next morning. She left with practically everything in the room. <laughs> you don't have much luck with women, do you? <laughs> well, you know what they say. The cleanest breakup is when a woman runs out on you. What a <laughs> <your> statement. <laughs> oh, but you're lucky. I mean to have so many people to kid around with. For me, I'm all alone. I've been all alone all my life. What about your childhood? <laughs> yes, I did have a childhood. I was born in a small town in Wales, right off the banks of the Tulesian River. It was a small gypsy town. Gypsy? That's right, gypsy. And we didn't call ourselves gypsy. We called ourselves Rom. <laughs> See, a true gypsy is born under the blue sky and is destined to die under the same blue sky. This gypsy law. So then I guess you plan on dying underneath the blue skies? Mm -mm. Every gypsy is given a name at birth. My given name was Slato. 
Salado. Mm hmm It's got a strange resonance to that name. What does it mean? I can't tell you. <laughs> that too must be part of the law. <laughs> <laughs> the law it is. <laughs> you know, ever since I met you, enigmatic, mysterious glint in your eyes. Mind, it must be the gypsy in you. A glance from thy soul-searching eye can raise with hope, depress with fear. Byron again? <laughs> yeah. You must really like him, don't you? Yes. So I feel as though we're birds of a feather. Then he must be self-obsessed as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be classified as a romantic. My father was a strict man and couldn't forgive his son for failing academically. He blamed my failure on the time I wasted inventing adventures, dreaming of a utopian landscape. I was brought up to believe that dreams, the power of the imagination, as well as all the things I loved as a child, were useless, a complete waste of time. It was as if he was telling me I was useless. And then again, it may be just that. And I think I was probably born too late. By the time I was 15, everything there was to be done had already been done. The western territories were colonized. The jungles had been explored. There was no wilderness for me to wander into. No jungles for me to cut my way through. I guess that's how I ended up roaming the country. And granted, I picked a few fights along the way, played with fire, gambled on my life a few times. But none of that comes close to the truth I'm searching for. I yearn for something far greater. I can't quite explain myself, but it's as though I'm on a quest for some intangible treasure of sorts. Kadok, I envy you. You have psychic powers that few are blessed with. And being born a gypsy, you can choose to live how you wish. And who gave you the right to act as if you figured me out? Do you have any idea how I was raised? <laughs> you make me laugh. Adventures. Please, you haven't the slightest clue. Do you have any idea how much pain my psychic powers have brought me? My father died when I was only a child. I predicted the exact time, place, and ending of my father's life. Imagine that, predicting your own father's death. Hmm. You know, I was cursed as a child, being given powers not meant for a child. And my mother, oh, she, she was so frightened and so full of hatred for me. She tried to kill me with her very hands. The gypsy elders got together and decided to excommunicate me. I was only nine then. Do you have any idea how a nine-year-old child survives without the help of a living soul? Treasures, you must be joking. Have you ever cried and begged for your next meal? Did you ever sell your body seeking shelter from the frigid night air? <laughs> I used to be just like Charlotte. When she cried and said, no one has ever loved me. 
Oh, words cut straight through me. It was me she was talking about. Just like her, I wish that everybody would die and harbor a hatred for all mankind. But you see, Charlotte has made her peace and poof, 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 gone heaven. Me, I'm still alive and still home alone. No one has ever lent a helping hand. No one. Kadoka, you? I'm not as free as you make me out to be. I am a poor, dirty, ignorant woman who threw her gypsy pride to the dogs in order to live. But you see, even someone like me can do good. Because with my powers, I can help ease the pain of others. That's when I feel good about living. I don't need to be loved. I just want my life to have some meaning. And just want someone Tell me they need me. <laughs> you. <laughs> no way will you ever understand. <laughs> done. It's completed.